Hello again, everybody. It's Eric with Better Every Shave back with another video. And today I have a special new razor, new to me, not new in the slightest. Uh, it's actually quite an old razor. Uh, this is the Gem Junior 1912. And this is, uh, I found out, so this, a lot of people call this the baton handle for good reason. Uh, but I actually found out through doing some research for this video that it's called the parade handle which uh, makes it even fancier <laughs> parade. I'm guessing is because, you know, the parade baton. And uh, so anyway, this was something that I've been aware of for a while, was looking for, was hoping to find and uh, just kept not catching the auctions and for whatever reason. So this I got along with another one, which was actually a, uh, actually an accident because I thought it was a listing for one, uh, one of these. And it was actually for two, which was uh, pretty cool. And uh, when I got this one that had a lot of uh, oxidation, a lot of uh, sort of, I guess, tarnish on it. And I took a little bit of uh, flits and uh, polishing cloth and it shined right up. So the uh, 1912 patent covers a lot of different razors. So the American Safety Razor Corporation that made this razor uh, had a number of different brands going at the time. So they had Gem. They had Star, they had Ever Ready, and they also made one of these with a red handle, uh, the parade style baton handle, uh, with a silver head and a different safety bar, uh, a sort of smooth safety bar instead of this uh, comb style. And uh, it was called the Treat uh, Parade Style. It can be a little confusing because unlike Gillette, who had date codes and you could tell exactly what year something was made, even down to what quarter it was made. Um, it's confusing because that, like I said, that 1912 patent covers a lot of different razors, a lot of different brands. So um, if you say, oh, I have a gem 1912, like it, and it doesn't mean it's the same one that someone else has. Um, it, it certainly could obviously, but I mean, there, there's just so many different varieties. Um, so that's interesting in a way because there are sort of idiosyncratic changes. For example, this one has a smooth tab here for opening the top and uh, flipping it up and putting in a blade. The other one that I have, which looks almost exactly the same, has a small indentation there. Uh, I don't have it next to me. I'm ill prepared, unfortunately, but trust me, there's a, there's, so beyond that though, there's really no difference that I can see. The handle's the same, the comb is the same, the you know, everything else is the same, except that there's a small indentation in that tab. So, uh, you know, I guess they would just make subtle changes and keep building them and uh, manufacturing them and, and putting them out. So um, the thing that is amazing, though, that this was built between probably somewhere around 1912 into the 1920s, uh, making this almost, if not 100 years old. And that fact alone is pretty amazing to me, considering that it's Honestly, once I cleaned it up, I, I can't find a single thing wrong with it. Um, and the fact that it's survived as long as it has, even this Bakelite handle is, uh, is really impressive to me. Let's take a look at the Gem Junior Parade or Baton handle. So as I mentioned earlier, this came with a good bit of tarnish on it. And I was able to get it polished up pretty easily. It's just a brass, solid brass. So it's uh, pretty easy to clean up. I will have the measurement and weight as part of the close-up shots that I've taken. I'm trying a couple of new things. And uh, so I'll have that flash by for this. I just wanted to show the razor itself in my hand. So give you some sense of size. Um, and then also loading the blade. So if you've used this style of gem razor before, you'll know that this has a flip up top. And so it flips open, it says gem on the inside there. And you would take your gem blade. And the easiest way that I've found is to set it back into the back and then let it sort of come to the front onto the stops. Make sure you can see that there. And then you just simply flip it down and that locks it in place. Simple as that. And then also these heads 
they're not permanently attached to the handle, so you can take this handle off and put on a different style of handle. These are not standard modern size threads though, so you'd need an adapter to use a modern style handle. And there you go. As I had mentioned, the condition of this for the age of it is, is truly ast like astonishing. Even this Bakelite, I mean, you can see how shiny and clean that is. There's no crazing or you know cracking, um, anything like that, so. shave. I have my Vanderhagen shave butter on as a pre-shave. Let's see if I remember to actually show it. Sometimes I do. All right, I've got my Jara. This is the 287, which has a uh, faux horsehair knot from Maggard's. This Haverford soap uh, by, by Sterling I was not prepared. <laughs> this is this fragrance is just so good. It's I'm not sure if you can quite see it. It's a very dark soap, and they actually say be careful if you're using brushes with a light uh, colored knot because it can actually stain them from the high vanilla vanillin content. I think is what it said. But yeah, it's it's a very dark soap, and even the the uh, whipped uh, lather has a bit of a cast to it. So it's no secret that I am a huge fan of SC razors, and I have to say that it, it, there's very few that I pick up now that feel uncomfortable to me. I'm just kind of used to the angle and uh, sort of the feel. I, and I have other 1912 razors, so basically this head on other handles. So it's, it's not as though I've never shaved with a razor, uh, with this type of razor before. I definitely have to say that the baton style handle is uh, it's very comfortable to use. Yeah, some great lather there. You can see it's nice and shiny. Lots of lots of hydration in it. Whipped up very very nicely. The thicker handle, the baton style handle, parade handle, is very easy to hold for me. Uh, having bigger hands and especially being much larger at the base. So it's a very comfortable razor to use. The comb style safety, well it's not a bar, like a safety comb I guess. Yeah, you can hear it. You can hear it cutting. Razor has pretty good feedback. That's for sure. The uh, the comb on this though, it it really does let the blade. It lets it get close to your skin, but there isn't a ton of blade feel. So even though in some gem style razors, there's definitely a, a very present edge on the blade. This really keeps that blade far enough away from your skin that you, it doesn't feel uh, particularly aggressive so as i'm doing this you know going up on my neck here usually if this is a a, a razor that is very efficient or aggressive i will right here is where i'm in danger of nicking myself usually um, but this this does such a good job of keeping that blade just far enough away <coughs> I did not use very much soap, but I got copious amounts of lather, which is not unusual for sterling soaps. Um, 
at least in my experience, I've, I've always had very good luck with, with the performance of the soaps. And yeah, I was very happy about this one. I, uh, this, this fragrance, I'll tell you, if, if you haven't tried it, it's just such a present, strong, uh, vanilla, sweet, you know, sort of fragrance. Um, it, it stayed with me. So I usually shave, uh, every other day and just from having it in my, my beard, my facial hair and on my skin, I was able to smell it if I, um, I could catch whiffs of it for at least the whole next day. And even part of the second day, there was just, it's that it's probably the strongest sterling soap in terms of scent strength that I've tried. And I haven't tried them all. Admittedly, I've, I've tried maybe eight of them, you know, eight or maybe 10 uh, of the different fragrances, but this one just has such a strong uh, characteristic to it. And maybe it's just because it's that really strong sweetness. But here I am on the third pass going against the grain. And these are all the spots that are difficult here on the neck. <laughs> and yeah, I was very happy with this. Because it was just so smooth right away. God. It just absolutely. So good. Yeah, it was. It was so good. And this side's a little tricky because it, further back toward my ear, it goes up and then towards my chin, I have to sort of go this way. Yeah. And that's always the spot where I either nick myself or I get a, a lot of irritation from doing that. And I could probably get away with not doing it, but I really like having a completely smooth face and I just, I have to go sideways like that. Uh, even though I know with some razors I'm going to re possibly regret it. But this was just such a good shave. Let's see if I had any irritation. I think I did have like a little tiny bit, sort of in those spots where I was saying on my on my neck there. Never give it away early, though. It's always a big reveal. Will there be irritation? Just a tiny little bit, he says. <laughs> yep, in the same spots. So, just a tiny, tiny bit. Which is what I expected, so. In addition to the soap, I also have the aftershave splash. And honestly, thinking about it now, so I had said earlier that, you know, for it was almost, it was over a day that I could still smell it. And I think probably the big reason for that was using the splash as well. Because I tend to rub it into my, uh, into my goatee as well. And it, the hair kind of <laughs> absorbs it a little bit. So yeah, fantastic stuff. And then I finish off with some of the Hendrix Classics and Company White Star Balm, which <laughs> was in another room. Hey, you can't leave, you're shaving. Yes, the White Star Unscented Balm, excellent, excellent stuff. I, you know, I've used Nivea for years and I thought, oh, it's good stuff. You know, it does a good job. N not even close. This is, this is in a completely different league. It's, uh, it's so smooth and it really leaves my face feeling like completely refreshed um, after having dragged a blade across it. And uh, it soaks in very nicely. There's no greasy residue or after, you know. I, I have never been a fan of sunscreen or... You know, any, anything that has that consistency where it, <laughs> it's yes, good shave. Um, so good. So good. Yes, so good, no doubt. Anyway, never been a fan of the... Uh... Also so good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Great shave. Excellent shave. So anyway, just to finish this out with staring at me in a freeze frame. Uh, 
the uh, I've never been a fan of having anything on my skin, you know, sunblock or uh, moisturizer, stuff like that. But this is one of those products that's so light and so, uh, you know, just perfectly blended and balanced and everything. Yeah, it's, it's very, very nice to use. And I've actually started using it on uh, my hands and elsewhere, too, because it's just such a nice formula. All right, there you go. There's the shave. It was excellent. Just absolutely wonderful shave. I was couldn't have been happier. It was as perfectly smooth as you could possibly be. Okay, well, I just want to give you my final thoughts on this razor. Uh, first of all, I think if you've never tried a gem razor, you really should. And check back here because I'm going to do something with giveaways. Um, planning something with rounding up some classic vintage uh, razors, single edge in particular, and uh, and maybe doing some some giveaways. And I really want people to try single edge razors, and I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, and uh, buy some some of these and uh, have them as giveaways. So uh, they're not necessarily going to be tied to like milestones of certain number of subscribers or anything like that. I just want to I want to get get some of these razors out into people's hands and get some feedback. So, um, yeah, check back for that. Anyway, Gem Jr. with the, par the parade model with the baton handle. So what do I like about this razor? Well, I really like the large handle that's very easy to hold. Um, normally, short-handled razors can be a little tricky for me to hold. Um, you know, I have large hands, and sometimes, especially when I'm trying to maneuver and, and you know, get into a tight spot. Sometimes it's an uncomfortable angle and just having that thicker handle made it easier for me to kind of guide it and get the razor right where I wanted it to be. So love the uh, the bigger handle. I also am just impressed by the durability of this razor. The fact that it is, you know, a hundred years old. Oops, sorry. <laughs> the fact that it's close to a hundred years old, if not a hundred years old, and it looks the way it does, um, you know, that, that's pretty amazing to me. And the, so the fact that they are tr also tremendous value for money. So you can find these usually uh, for less than $20 on eBay. Now I've noticed recently there's some sort of, I don't know what's going on with price fluctuations and things, but uh, you might see these, especially ones that are in nice shape. So keep in mind, this one did look a little dingy. This There was some greening and some some definite patina on here so it wasn't as shiny and pretty when i bought it but it was also wasn't hard to clean up uh, and and because these are solid brass it's kind of almost impossible to mess them up um, you know unless they're bent obviously or, or otherwise sort of broken in some way um, so yes tremendous value for money very durable should last forever they've already sort of lasted forever in terms of a uh, product um, and to be fair, if I had to come up with a dislike for this razor, and then I'm gonna, I guess, and by extension, all gem razors would be that there's such a limited number of blades available. Um, that's okay because I don't have a problem with those blades. I think they work very well. So that's that's good. I'm glad that they're they are still making them and, and that there is a good option. But I know for a lot of people, it's it's a bit of a turn off to not have that variety and, and possibility of trying different blades. Now, if you go on Try a Blade um, and other sites that offer uh, blade samplers or, or uh, you know, different types of blades, I did this and you can find there's a couple different carbon types. There's a, a PAL carbon um, instead of a gem blade, it says PAL on the, on the spline. Um, there's stainless without the coating. So there are, I think, maybe like five different kinds, let's just say. Um, and I've tried all of them and, and the ones that I like the most are the stainless, but I, th I could see how that could possibly be a turnoff. Um, but that's, that's really it. Those, that's, that's the, <laughs> the most critical thing that I personally can think of about these. I'm sure uh, other people have their own likes and dislikes, but for me, this is just such a fantastic shaver. Uh, it's, it's stood the test of time. And uh, I genuinely hope that everybody gets a chance to try these, try one of these at some point. So that's my look at the Gem Junior Parade model with the baton handle. And I hope to see you in another video soon. Until then, happy shaves. Have a great day. All right, bye-bye.